my shame, I'd never actually been to Scotland before. Seeing as the border was only 400 miles from my doorstep in Bath, this did feel like somewhat of an oversight. Stranger still, being a massive film nerd, I'm a great admirer of many a movie made in Scotland. Danny Boyle's 1996 second feature, Train Spotting, was largely set in Edinburgh, although quite conversely, much of the shoot seemed to have taken place in Glasgow. There was also 2012 Skyfall, a movie which used the Scottish Highlands extensively in its third act, the beautiful mountains of Glencoe providing Bond with a childhood stomping ground in which to drag poor old Judy Dench about him. Finally, at the other end of the quality spectrum, there's Loch Ness, a film so woeful that it was quite possibly the last nail in the coffin of Ted Danson's burgeoning movie career. Three of us would be making the trip. Bridget, who was responsible for finding and booking the incredible places we stayed in. Our dog, Quincy, who was quite frankly coming whether he liked it or not. And me, the driver, would be making the road trip in a dilapidated 20-year-old Nissan Micra, which many quite rightly feared would never be up to the journey. You came napping? You're braver than I thought. <laughs> The Liverpool Yacht Club was our first port of call. We'd only travelled a mere 150 miles north, but it was the hottest day of the year and the aircon in the Nissan had long given up the ghost. We would only be staying one night in Liverpool, so our sightseeing was completed at speed. After a much needed iced cold beer at the tank room, we made for our lodgings on the Liverpool boat. However, Quincy had already decided that he was none too pleased with his proximity to the water. Scotland was everything you imagined it to be, and the further north we travelled, the more spectacular it seemed to get. We were only an hour from our accommodation at Loch Gilp Head when disaster struck. <laughs> Have you been inducted? The sat-nav had clearly taken us the wrong way. There was some amusement to be had in our situation for at least the first 30 minutes. But as the hilarity passed and the track became even more treacherous, I was simply reminded of this. Our nerves in tatters, we finally reached our destination, neither of us feeling brave enough to investigate the rattling that was now emitting from the underside of the car. But with the help of a hot tub, a bottle of wine and our glorious surroundings, we somehow managed to muddle through. Bridget's birthday. We were in no rush to do anything in particular, so the day was spent lazing around in the cabin before heading out to the nearby village of Inverere. Thank you. 
what's been the best thing about your birthday? Not having to drive up there. I swear you Okay. You've now got swearing on the video. Bleep it out. Okay, I'll bleep it out. Scott Jake? Good? Scott Jake's are good. As we were packing to leave, I thought it might be a good idea to investigate the damage to the underside of the car. Sure enough, the housing around the exhaust had been torn to pieces. Bridget, in her infinite wisdom, didn't really want to hear any details. On arriving at the Inver, Bridget made sure that her priorities were in order. Wi Fi code. It's going really well. Quincy's coming to help. Next morning we were on the road once more. The locks and forests were soon behind us as we found ourselves weaving through the staggering beauty of the mountains of Glencoe. Although not as luxurious as the lodge in Loch Gill Ped, the riverbeds was a fun, compact cabin situated perfectly for easy access to the mountains and the myriad of walks that looped the surrounding Scottish countryside. Forecast predicted rain all day, not that we really minded. Surrendering to the elements we embarked on what would probably end up being our favourite day of the trip. Quincy seemed relieved to finally be out of the rain, but our return to our cabin was fairly short-lived. Before long, we were heading out to Signal Rock.
By the time we'd stumbled across the click egg in, we were all pretty much soaked to the bone. An opportunity to dry our things by the fire, enjoy a cold beer and some hot soup was greatly appreciated. Fort William was only a 20 minute drive from our lodge at the riverbeds. From there we caught the Jacobite steam train to the port of Malig, situated on the northwest coast. Part of the journey would see us crossing the Glenfinnan Viaduct, made famous in a number of the Harry Potter movies. Brave. The journey itself was fun, despite the face masks. Such are the times we live in, I suppose. But Malik, I felt, was somewhat of a disappointment. To be fair, picturesque as it was, I think we'd simply had a beauty overload by this point. Before nightfall we found ourselves once again drawn back to the Three Sisters, a more than fitting end to what had been another fantastic day. We'd initially planned to complete a walk beneath the Glenfin and Viaduct, but despite setting out early, parking was an impossibility. Quickly altering our itinerary, we began a 65 mile journey out towards Loch Ness. Every now and again, we'd pull over the car and explore our surroundings as we slowly meandered our way towards the infamous Loch.
Leaving Glencoe was difficult. It was utterly awe-inspiring, and even as we were winding our way between the three sisters, we couldn't resist one last moment standing in the shadows of those mountains. last stop before heading home. I suppose the stop at Barnard Castle does require some explanation. My wife was very worried, particularly given my eyesight had seemed to, seemed to have been affected by the disease. She did not want to risk a nearly 300 mile drive with our child, given how ill I had been. We agreed that we should go for a short drive to see if I could drive safely. We drove for roughly half an hour and ended up on the outskirts of Barnard Castle town. We did not visit the castle, we did not walk around the town. We parked by a river. My wife and I discussed the situation. We agreed that I could drive safely. We should turn around and go home. I felt a bit sick. We all felt a bit sick, Dom. Needless to say, Barnard Castle seemed lovely. And yes, we did find a spec saver. <laughs>